If you haven't done so, please pause the video and try the question before moving on. What we have to understand is this given quantity, 16 times 10 to the seventh pascals. As the question notes, this turns out to be the maximum compressional stress. And we know from this chapter that there's a nice formula for that compressional stress. And we can see that the stress exerted on an object is equal to the force exerted on that object divided by its cross-sectional area. The question actually gives us the cross-sectional area of the bone in question. And so our goal is to actually calculate the force. Once we have the force, we can divide it by the area, and then we're going to compare our result to the maximum stress that the bone can withstand. So again, our first goal is to actually calculate the force exerted on the bone during this crash. Now, of course, we know from an earlier chapter that the force acting on the bone is going to equal the mass of the bone multiplied by its acceleration. And the question actually gives us enough information to find the acceleration. We have the mass, and therefore we can easily find the force. Now, let's turn to finding the acceleration next. We are told that the arm comes to rest during the collision, so we know that the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. The initial velocity is given to us as 80 kilometers per hour. We're going to have to convert that into meters per second, so let's do that. We know, of course, that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, and if we set up the conversion in this manner, the kilometers are going to cancel. And then one hour turns out to be 3,600 seconds. And by setting up the conversion that way, the hours will cancel out. So we'll be left with meters per second. Let's pick up our calculators and make the conversion. We get roughly 22.2 .2 meters per second. So this will be, again, the initial velocity of the bone. We then go back and read that the time required to stop the bone during the collision is 5 milliseconds. Because that time is given in milliseconds, we're going to have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 3 in order to convert it into seconds. And then again, we're trying to solve for the acceleration. So let's turn to one of the formulas we've learned from kinematics, which tells us that the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. We'll go ahead and plug in the known values. And when we compute that, we get a pretty large acceleration. It's in the order of negative 4,444 meters per second squared. The fact that there's a negative sign actually doesn't really matter for this problem. We're simply interested in the amount of acceleration, not really the direction. So if we step back to what we had colored in red, we needed the acceleration in order to determine the force acting on the bone during the collision. So now that we have the acceleration and the mass was given, we're going to be able to calculate that force. And when we perform that calculation, we can see that the force is pretty substantial. It's roughly 13,333 newtons. So now that we have the force acting on the arm, we can take that force and divide it by the cross-sectional area, which was given to us. Notice it's given in centimeters squared. We're going to have to make a conversion into meters squared. And to make that conversion from centimeters squared to meters squared, we just recall that one meter is exactly 100 centimeters. And if you notice, those won't yet cancel because you have centimeters squared and then centimeters. So all you have to do is square the entire quantity in the parentheses, and that will change the centimeters in the denominator to centimeters squared. So then they would end up canceling out. So now we can pick up our calculator one more time and compute this. And we get roughly 5.5 times 10 to the seventh, and our unit would be newtons per meter squared. If you prefer, you can write that as pascals. And so we can compare the stress during the collision with the maximum compressional stress that the arm can withstand. And we can see that the actual stress is, thankfully, less than the maximum. So when the question says, is the arm going to withstand the crash? Yes, the arm will withstand the crash because the stress acting on it is less than the maximum stress that it can actually withstand. Thanks for taking the time to watch. If you like the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send your own question into the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.